We're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. Not really. It's pretty damn cold outside. Since the last episode of the Hunky Vape Global 20, Element Vape has promptly secured their website. The FDA continues to issue warning letters to dozens of vape companies and issues the first warning letter for vaping hardware. The EU Beating Cancer Plan includes vaping as a harm reduction tool to prevent cancer. And South Africa is the latest country to double the prices of harm reduction products using taxes. Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy and News for the week ending February 25th, 2022. Hey there, folks. Last episode, I started off by reporting that the Element Vape website was hacked with a credit card skimmer. And today, I'm happy to report the Element Vape website is once again secure. After being notified of the match card exploit, Element Vape reacted promptly, eliminating the malicious code from its website on the same day. For those of you who don't deal with information security, you might be surprised at how often things like this happen. Just last month, big name websites like Amazon and Target also suffered the very same fate. It's way more common than most people realize. However, since I know that the site has been fixed, well, I placed an order for some coils, a 510 adapter, and two new RTAs that are gonna be reviewed once they arrive. Moving on. US FDA issues warning letter for vapor hardware. You know, despite me not reporting every single warning letter that the FDA issues, they have continued their relentless pursuit to slowly wipe out all the vape products which have not met PMTA requirements nor been granted marketing orders by the FDA. You know, normally these warning letters are for online stores online sales of vaping e-liquids or e-liquid manufacturers or vape shops that are using an online presence to sell their in-store items. Well, as a Valentine's Day present to the vaping industry, the FDA issued a warning letter to Gudong Segeli Electronic Technology Company Limited, doing business as Segeli Vape Incorporated. The FDA warning letter states, new tobacco products without required marketing authorization are adulterated and misbranded. Our review of the website, Segeli.com, revealed that you manufacture and offer for sale or distribution to customers in the United States and products without a marketing authorization order, including the Segeli Humvee 80 and the Segeli 213 fog coil. Segeli filed PMTAs for six products on September 7th of 2020, but the FDA on February 5th of 2021 issued a refuse to accept determination letter on PMTA STN PM0001221. So now they follow up that refuse to accept by issuing a warning letter and Segeli now has 15 days to submit a written response on how they plan to bring their products into compliance. Hmm. The FDA issued a warning letter for a product that is hardware, that doesn't contain any tobacco or any drugs, but does have regulatory required lies plastered on the packaging. Hmm, see that? Seems like I need to do a uh, review of this product to determine if it actually contains nicotine or any drug, or is it just a piece of hardware? Is it a piece of technology? Look for that review this weekend. I think it's a lie. There's no nicotine in there, but we'll find out this weekend. Anyway, getting back to the FDA warning letters. Listen, folks, I've got some pretty outrageous emails from some diehard people out there saying that, oh, I'm just trying to hurt vaping. 
because they went into their vape shop and their vape shop says, everything's fine. There's nothing to worry about. They can still get stuff. So why I keep saying all this stuff? There's nothing to worry about. Can't I just leave it alone? Sorry, dude, but your vape shop isn't informed and is obviously only worried about telling you the comforting lies that keep you going back to the store until one day they aren't gonna be able to get what they need to restock the shelves. The news is what it is. And the reality is your government officials have passed laws that are slowly being enforced by the FDA. One by one, vape shops and now hardware manufacturers are being eliminated from the US vaping market. The latest victim is Bulldog Vapor LLC, doing business as Bullies Vapor, who manufactures over 7,800 products and listed them with the FDA who knows how many years ago just to stay compliant with the laws back then. Well, this tiny vapor company didn't follow PMTA because it's obviously impossible to comply with the laws that are in place right now. Well, the FDA finally caught up to Bullies Vapor by removing their 7,800 products and a simple Bing or Google search shows their online presence. But now that the FDA sent them and the companies hosting their online presence a warning letter, clicking on their website takes you back to Google or leaves you with a spinning hourglass until it times out. Bulldog Vapor is done with e-commerce and only available at their brick and mortar location, which is now going to have a much harder time staying open without their online customers and without their house e-liquids. One by one, the FDA is administratively closing vape shops. Here you go. Here's your warning letter to discontinue violative labeling, advertising, sale, or distribution of these tobacco products. Or, if you stay in business after getting one of these letters, well, then the FDA can uh, assess civil money penalties, seizure, or injunction. PB Dragon, Freedom Smoke USA, Vapors Inc., LE Sig Enterprises, Twisted Vapors, iVape, Victory Vapor, Walker Trading Company, AKA Vape Dojo, Wise Guy Vape, Einstein Vapes, Fantasia Distribution, the list just goes on and on and on, and that's just the companies from this month alone. They are literally using FDA's registration data to target legitimate businesses which safely made products to quit smoking. And by closing, these legitimate companies are pushing ex-smokers to the black market companies, which never complied with the FDA or any of these regulations. That is reality in the United States. Not what your minimum wage vape shop worker lied to you about. You know, if you want, I could lie to you or hide the truth like some other big name vape reviewers, but that's not keeping it real. That's using drama to stay relevant and popular. Don't bury your head in the sand. Please, spare a few minutes every day and go advocate for the single best way to quit smoking. Moving on. The EU endorsed vapes as part of Europe's beating cancer plan. The voting took place on the 16th of February, and this is the first time that the European institution has publicly acknowledged the potential of vaping products as smoking cessation tools. On the other hand, highlighted a press release by the World Vapors Alliance, the MEPs did not rule out the possible future flavor bans. This despite the fact that science has proven that flavored products are the key in enticing smokers to switch from cigarettes to safer alternatives. Will this vote influence the TPD? Discussing the fact that MEPs requested flavored products are labeled as appealing to children, 
president of ANPVU Italy and World Vapors Alliance advisory board member Carmine Canino said that data have clearly shown the consequences of flavor bans. Scientists, harm reduction experts, as well as consumers have been clear about the negative consequences of banning or even restricting flavors. Again and again and again, research has shown that flavors are essential to reducing smoking among adults. We need our policymakers to listen and act. WVA Director Michael Landell added, these are early days and it remains to be seen whether this vote will have any impact on the Tobacco Products Directive, TPD. It is crucial that experts and consumers keep raising their voices it is our hope that the Commission's future proposals acknowledge harm reduction. We will continue to advocate for our members, ensuring their voices are heard. The Global State of Tobacco Harm Reduction estimates that there are between 56 and 81 million vapors worldwide. That is not just anecdotal scientific hearsay. That's proof that vaping kills smoking. With 652 votes in favor, 15 against, and 27 abstentions, the European Parliament approved a report drawn up by the Special Committee on the Fight Against Cancer. In the articulation that will become a regulatory reference point during the revisions of the directives, there are also two explicit references to the electronic cigarette. One is certainly positive. From now on, the effects of vaping will have to be compared to those of smoking, and not to the health of non-smokers. This is the first time that a European institution has formally recognized the role of vaping in smoking cessation. The second reference, on the other hand, raises some concerns. Indeed, in truth, is a non-reference, because the text leaves it to the European Commission to decide which tastes of inhalation liquids should be banned. The only flavorings allowed, therefore, will be those contained and regulated in the next version of the TPD. Will the next version of the TPD utilize a white list of flavors like China's regulations, or are they going to blacklist a few flavors that they determine may attract kids? You know, with every story, questions are answered and a host of new questions emerge. SIG Magazine highlights why I always look for more than one source on vaping news. While the Vaping Post told us that EU endorses vapes as part of Europe's beating cancer plan, and it mentioned that flavored products appealing to children might be banned, it did not articulate how the reference point for comparison changed in Europe, or the fact that the upkeeping upcoming TPD is going to decide what flavorings are going to be allowed. Now I can completely understand why the Irish Vape Vendors Association stressed more than 80% of smokers who switch to e-cigarettes have completely stopped smoking. Around 65% of vapors in Europe use fruit or sweet liquids. For the sake of brevity, 80% of smokers stop smoking completely. An additional 12% reduce smoking because of vaping. And the variety of flavors is the most important reason that vapors use e-cigarettes to quit smoking. More than 3,300 vapors took part in this IVVA survey. The data, along with other testimony, is presented to the Ireland Oricta's Health Committee earlier this week. The health committee questioned why some products are sold in carton-like packaging, like Vampire Vape, but Vapor Pals Joanne O'Connell said that their website only sells flavors requested by their adult customers. And according to the Wall Street Journal, adults are not attracted to the packages. They are attracted to the taste. The specific flavor in question is available on the website because it's the most popular fruit flavor among adults. She also testified that her company consulted the manufacturer about their cartoonish packaging 
but can't change what the manufacturers decide to put on the box. All they can do is age verify the purchases of these products and give adults the flavors that they ask for. Regardless, the data clearly shows fruit-flavored e-cigarettes should be kept for adults. If you want them to stop smoking, or maybe the Irish Health Committee would rather damage a smoker's brain to get them to completely kick the habit. I'm not kidding, folks. 15 years ago, damaging a part of the brain known as the insula can reduce or completely eliminate the urge to smoke, according to a study at the University of Iowa. This could lead to a revolution in how smoking addiction can be treated. The lead researcher, UI graduate student Nasser Nakwat, started the study based on a former research subject of his, said David Raduf, a postdoctoral scholar at the university. While conducting a study on smoking addiction, Nakwi found a man with brain damage who said, after the damage occurred, his body forgot the urge to smoke. Nakwi, encouraged by his advisor, then began a study of nearly 70 smokers who had suffered brain damage. About half of them had quit after the injury and were asked about their experience of quitting smoking. Researchers found that people with damage to the insula quit immediately and without difficulty. The insula, located fairly deep in the brain's outer layer, is involved in awareness of the body's state, emotions, and urges. Yeah, it's quite obvious that there is no practical benefit to the results of this study. It's not like we have the technology for transcranial magnetic stimulation. Here, let me just zap part of your insula or give you a concussion so you completely forget smoking. Well, unless this is an episode of House, it's not happening. Moving on. Urgency for a new approach to tobacco control in Kenya. Tobacco use is the top most preventable cause of death in Kenya, according to the Ministry of Health. You would think that the government would be doing everything they can to reduce this impact of smoking on Kenya's population. However, as it stands, the government continues to take a quit-or-die approach to tobacco control. Kenya urgently needs to shift its focus away from this and embrace a harm reduction mindset. However, we remain very far from this and it threatens hundreds, if not thousands of lives. The urgency for a new approach to tobacco control in Kenya was highlighted at a conference hosted by the Campaign for Safer Alternatives and the African Harm Reduction Alliance last week. The conference coincided with the publication of a CASA survey of more than 200 Kenyans, which found more than a third of smokers who try to quit fail to do so. It's clear that these smokers need all the help possible to ensure that their next attempt to quit is successful. There should not be cast aside so easily. So what can be done to reduce the harm experienced by smokers and lift a burden from Kenyan society? As Dr. Kogoski Letlap, a doctor and AHRA president noted, most of the harm caused by cigarettes is from the burning of tobacco. If smokers switch to alternative products, which don't contain tobacco, you instantaneously reduce the harm and ultimately save lives. We need to take an approach that places risk reduction at its heart and move away from an all or nothing absolutionist perspective. Otherwise, we will continue to see thousands of smokers persisting in the habit that will ultimately lead to their death, says Joseph Maguero, chairman of Campaign for Safer Alternatives. Well, obviously, that message was not loud enough for South Africa's finance minister to hear because Enoch Dongwa has announced increases in excise duties for alcohol and tobacco products, as well as a hefty new tax for vaping liquids. The minister delivered his 2022 budget speech on Wednesday, revealing that the so-called syntax category was again a prime target as a source of additional funding for the National Treasury. Godongwa announced increases of between 4.5 and 6% for various alcohol beverages and smoking products, including 
11 cent increase for a 340 mil can of beer or cider, a 17 cent increase for 750 mil of wine. But if you want that wine to be sparkling wine, well, that's going to cost you an additional 76 cents. A bottle of spirits is going up four rand 83. A pack of cigarettes is going up a rand three cents. 25 grams of pipe tobacco will see a 37 cent increase, while a 23 gram cigar, well, that's going up six rand 77. The new taxes on these products will apply with immediate effect and clearly demonstrate disproportionate taxation. In addition, the government has proposed a new tax on vaping liquid of at least two rand 90 per milliliter from 1 January, 2023. Godongwa said that the tax would first have to be subjected to a public consultation process, although he wished he could immediately implement it. A typical bottle of vaping liquid on the South African market contains either 100 or 120 mils, which means that an additional 290 to 348 rand in taxes are going to be added to the price. Online stores like vaking.co.za sell these for between 200 and 300 rand a bottle, meaning many of the products will become more than twice as expensive. Twice as expensive? It's more than double what they're paying now. It's a 145% increase because of taxes. That's just insane on a harm reduction product. You know, the last couple of videos, I beat a dead horse until it was completely macerated into the ground by highlighting that one death every second, every five seconds is how often smoking kills. But if you know anything about math, you know that an average of everything in a country or on a planet requires some places to be more and some places to be less. So it begs the question, where on the globe is it the highest? Well, according to this article from the Israel National News, smoking kills someone every four seconds. Except when you read the article, you find out that it's just a World Health Organization scare tactic to spearhead increasing taxes to stop Israeli youth from starting the habit. In Israel, where 59% of children are exposed to secondhand smoke, smoking-related illness killed 22 people each day for a total of 8,000 people each year, 800 of whom were killed by others' smoking habits. Hmm. The population of Israel is 8.88 million, and smoking kills 22 people a day. That's a far cry from one death every four seconds, and proof that statistics can be manipulated by anyone including the World Health Organization. Well, here's some unmanipulated data for you. Every year, almost half a million Americans die from smoking in the United States. Don't you think maybe it's finally time for the US FDA to acknowledge that their prohibition tactics only cause more harm and more deaths? Maybe it's finally time for the US FDA to realize vaping is an ally which reduces harm to end smoking. Just like in Malaysia, vaping is an ally. Malaysia should follow New Zealand's approach to end smoking. There is a mountain of evidence which shows how vaping is not only less harmful than cigarettes, but also effective in assisting people to kick the smoking habit. These days, it's difficult for any government to get the people and the politicians on both sides of the divide excited about any policy. But our authorities certainly got many excited when they announced the plan to ban access of tobacco products to those born after 2005. When the news broke, social media was a buzz. At a time when the political stakes are high, 
This is a bold move. There were those who questioned whether the authorities had the willpower to make this a reality. The cynicism was understandable. The authorities have so far failed to stamp out illicit cigarettes. Malaysia is still the number one country for illicit cigarettes in the world, or even properly enforce a smoking ban in restaurants. The ministry's announcement that the end game, which also includes vaping, gave the cynics more reasons to feel that they were right to doubt the government's plan. Whatever work. The reason for this is simple. In any plan to get people to stop smoking, vaping is an ally. In fact, it is the key ally, if not the most important one. It may sound peculiar because smoking and vaping are often seen in the same light, but science tells us otherwise. There's a mountain of evidence that keeps growing, which shows how vaping is not only less harmful than cigarettes, but also effective in assisting people to kick the smoking habit. More effective even than nicotine patches, gum, or medication. This is precisely why vaping is seen as an important part of New Zealand's own tobacco endgame, the plan called Smoke Free 2025. Late last year, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, when talking about the country's own Smoke Free 2025 plan, smoke on the need to look at alternatives like vaping instead of old-style restrictions like increasing the price of cigarettes. We've already got the vaping framework. We're already seeing vaping being used by people as a tool to stop smoking. And that actually enables us to push ahead with further activities to reduce smoking because there is an alternative that works very successfully for people in order to stop smoking. We know vaping is making a difference for those now in order to stop smoking. So it is an important tool, she was quoted as saying. She could not have said it any better, and Malaysia would do well to take a leaf out of New Zealand's playbook. Though vaping is not without risks, it is undeniably a less harmful and better alternative to smoking. Interestingly, vaping has been the cornerstone theme of New Zealand's Quit Strong campaign, and is offered as a key support mechanism to help people quit smoking. Putrajaya doesn't even have to reinvent the wheel, as other countries like New Zealand are showing how they can get people to quit smoking. But the government will not accomplish its goal with a reliance on negative sentiment or outdated notions on things like vaping. It must walk the talk on the reliance of science and data. The same thing it preaches when it comes to COVID-19 and vaccinations, scientific facts and data are all around us. It's up to us whether we want to use them in designing policies that can not only change, but also save lives. The science, data, and reality of prohibition are beyond obvious. Just take a look at Thailand. Thailand banned vaping banned electronic cigarettes, banned Ibaraku, and banned e-juice in 2014. Punishment for vaping or the possession of vaping products includes fines up to 30,000 baht and a jail sentence of up to 10 years in prison. Did any of this work? Did it stop vaping in Thailand? No, of course not. Thailand's illegal vaping market continues to grow and in 2019 was estimated between 3 and 6 billion baht. That's 100 to 200 million dollars. Tourists face 10 years in prison for vaping in Thailand. Do they finally realize how damaging and useless their prohibition is? Thailand legalized vaping set to be a global turning point. Countries which have chosen to legalize and regulate e-cigarettes have seen a fall in overall smoking rates and have much better control over youth vaping. It's exciting for Thailand, and in fact, the world, that the government is now set to overturn its ban on the sale of vape products, says Asa Saligupta, director of ECST, ends Cigarette Smoke Thailand. 
Mr. Saligupta says Thailand's harsh ban and penalties on vape sales has meant too many smokers have been stuck with cigarettes, while young people buy e-cigarettes on the black market with no control over purchase age or product safety standards. It was a big breakthrough last year when the minister told local media that vaping is safer for people trying to quit smoking. Since then, he has walked the talk, looking at ways vaping can be legalized. He fully understands it offers smokers a less harmful alternative to deadly cigarettes and protects non-smokers from the dangers of secondhand smoke. A decade of international studies has proven vaping is miles safer than smoking, with Public Health England resolute that vaping remains 95% less harmful than smoking combustible cigarettes. International research also shows countries which have adopted progressive policies around vaping have seen their smoking rates fall twice as fast as those countries such as Thailand, which haven't. Around the world, vaping is saving millions of ex-smokers' lives and can save many more if safer nicotine products are embraced and not demonized. Thailand's 10 million smokers have long deserved a readily and legally available alternative to cigarettes. The country's sky-high smoking rate is totally unacceptable. But thanks to the work of ECST and others, it's about to be seriously addressed, says Miss Nancy Lucas of the Ed Taro Vapors Community Advocacy. She says for a country where vaping can lead to arrests, sanctions, and even imprisonment, Thailand has been increasingly isolated internationally with its tobacco harm reduction policies ineffective and unrealistic. By legalizing the sale of vapes, Thailand will join countries like the Philippines and Malaysia, which are also waking up to the fact that vaping bans inevitably fail, leading to unnecessary smoking-related illnesses and deaths, says Ms. Lucas. Achieving legalization in Thailand, they say, would be a turning point internationally, leading to other countries rethinking their vaping bans. You know, boasting over 14,000 testimonials so far, CAFRA is calling on those who've quit cigarettes through smoke-free nicotine alternatives to tell their story on righttovape.org. If you live in Asia Pacific region, please visit righttovape.org and submit your testimony. If you live in North America, please visit casaw.org and submit your testimony. These testimonials are your success stories, documenting that harm reduction saves lives. And if there's any other organization that's collecting testimonials, please leave a comment below so I can feature them as well. Please and thank you. One additional request this week. Yesterday, I started a social experiment on Twitter by posting a smoking versus vaping warning, asking people who wants this warning on every pack of cigarettes sold. You know, this experiment all stems from a tobacco reporter in Blue Hole article reporting graphic health warnings are postponed once again in the United States. On February 10th, the U.S. District Court of the Eastern District of Texas issued a ruling to delay the U.S. Food and Drug Administration requiring Big Tobacco to add graphic health warnings for cigarette packages and advertisements. This has been postponed until April 9th of next year. And this thing's already been postponed three times already? Regardless, these are the images from the FDA, and they present the same information that Health Canada uses. But neither of these are as disgusting as Australia packaging, nor are any of these actually helping the situation. As a former smoker, I can attest that smokers are keenly aware of the health risks of smoking. I also know how stigmatizing smokers only leads to rebellious behavior. If I had a dollar for every time I said, 
Well, I guess it's time to light up another death stick. This channel would be in 4K was true stereo surround. I mean, that's beside the point. My point is, none of these warnings are helpful or give a smoker a reason to change their behavior. So what if a more helpful warning replaced all of them? It would need to be truthful, graphic enough to appease the tobacco control fanatics and give smokers an alternative nudge. Here, try this. This is better for you. A leaflet of truth included in a pack would never accomplish the task. Because as a former smoker, I remember pitching any insert directly into the bin. And there were several times that it was even a $5 coupon to try some new product. Knowing the diversity on Twitter, I knew that this was essentially going to be poking a stick at a hornet's nest. No one, except a few recent ex-smokers turned diehard vapors, are going to be happy about this graphical warning. So the social experiment began. And here and follows my request. Please leave a comment on this video or on Twitter with your thoughts about this warning. Yes, I know that there is a spelling mistake on the Twitter image, but that was done intentionally to see if people would really evaluate it letter for letter. Or are people simply looking at the most egregious aspect of this warning and ripping it to shreds based on a single flaw that they've identified? Here's the exact same images to simulate what a colorblind person would see based on all the different kinds of colorblindness out there. I'd like you guys to muster up your emotional intelligence and look at the warning with a wider perspective than you're used to. This is meant to stir discussion and highlight how a house divided against itself cannot stand. And the tobacco harm reduction movement cannot endure without collaboration or unification. So please leave a comment on this video or on the Twitter posting and let me know what you guys think. There is no wrong answer or comment. Please and thank you. Well, that wraps up the Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy News for the week ending February 25th, 2021. There were so many other stories that I wanted to talk about, like tax and COVID bring down German e-cigarette market, and the Swiss approved ban on tobacco ads, and British American Tobacco appoints chief medical officer, as well as a dozen scientific studies showing the benefits of nicotine. But unfortunately, they're all going to have to wait until the next episode, which will be heavily laced with science. So until then, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Please be good to each other and keep on vaping. Thank you.